Um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank the organization for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Uh, it's, it's really an honor to speak here. Uh, my talk will be about privacy and specifically about privacy regulation in the Netherlands. Um, brief introduction of myself. I, my name is Sophie uh, van der Meulen. Um, I'm orig originally from the Netherlands and I uh, work in Amsterdam as a lawyer and I'm involved in a lot of privacy issues and um, our firm is specialized in healthcare. Before I want to discuss the regulations with you, I actually have a few questions I would like to put forward. Because before we want to talk about privacy regulation, what actually is privacy? Just anyone has an idea about that? Because we can talk about it, there's a lot of rules on it, but why do we have rules on privacy? Anyone want to answer that? I'm going to ask you questions now. <laughs> Anyone want to respond? Okay. Well, privacy at its core, I, I used the picture of photographers, paparazzi. Um, well, a lot of celebrities, of, of course, have to do with paparazzi, have to, have to deal with them. And, well, they're not very happy about them. Of course, Normal people do not have to deal with paparazzi, but it doesn't mean we like to share our information with anyone in the world. Like, would you put anything online in, on Facebook? Would you share maybe uh, your bank account number? Would you do that? And some people claim that privacy is that. Do you think that privacy is that? Anyone raise their hands if you think that privacy is not that important? That's good. <laughs> I see no hands. This, well, I brought my bank card with me. This is my bank card. And I think it's very important that my bank actually protects my data and not shares it with anyone, because my bank account will be empty in no, in, in no time, which wouldn't make me very happy. Same goes for my medical file, which is kept by the hospital. I wouldn't like it if my medical information would be shared with anyone, like, for instance, an insurance company that maybe could raise my premium in the future because of something that's apparently wrong with me or something like that. So if you want to process medical data of people, I think it's very important to protect their privacy. Why? Because they have a basic fundamental right to be left alone in the first place. Otherwise, you can ask these people about what privacy is. As you will see, I put down two names of celebrities like Britney Spears and Jennifer Lawrence. I'm not sure if you've heard the story about them, or at least about Jennifer Lawrence. Well, there was a lot of privacy to be seen on the internet about her. But the first one is Monica Lewinsky. She was not a uh, celebrity in the first place, but her reputation got pretty much ruined by an incident and that went viral on the internet. Um, she held a very um, interesting speech about that a little while ago, which I would really encourage you to have a look at and to actually grasp the whole concept of privacy. But you see that there's the, uh, the indication, what about your reputation as a company? If you're handling medical data of people, you really have to be very careful with their data because they trust you with it. They basically trust you with little pieces of themselves. So you need to handle them wisely, because if you don't, and maybe it comes in the news, there's a, there's a data breach, um, your reputation is at stake too. So whenever you're involved in processing data, being health data or just personal data, you really have to take care of that. And um, you can do that in many ways, and you can uh, actually treat people's data in a good way, first of all by having a privacy policy. Does anyone have a privacy policy in place? Raise hands, please. I see a few hands. Okay, well, that's good. That's a good start. Why is this important? It's also about communication and trust in your company. If you are handling medical data, for instance, or just personal data, or data at all. Um, explain to people uh, why you want their data. This is a circle that might look familiar to some of you. It's the golden circle from Simon Sinek's talks. Um, first of all, you start with why. Why you want the data, what are you gonna do with it, and um, well, how you're gonna handle the data. How are you gonna keep the data safe? 
you really have to explain all these things in a privacy, a privacy policy. This is what also is actually in the legislation, but I really simplified it in the first place now. But that's just paperwork, right? That's, you can write it down, what you do with the data, but uh, that's not all. You're also, uh, you also have to think about security and about keeping the data safe from, from very first, from first thought about the design of your product. It's called privacy by design. Uh, this is actually a mandatory thing um, uh, from the European Commission. They want you to think about privacy uh, as soon as you start designing a new product. And I think that's a good, that's a good thing to think about. Okay, I will now start with um, the talk about privacy in the Netherlands. First of all, there's data protection rules in the EU, and they can be found here in the Data Protection Directive. And um, the Data Protection Directive is implemented in the in Dutch Wet Bescherming Persoonsgegevens. That's the Dutch Data Protection Act. Um, that's this one. And also in the Netherlands, you can see that um, in, in the EU, it's already a fundamental right. In the Netherlands, you can find uh, legislation on privacy in the Constitution, basically in Article 10. And then there is, uh, of course, the Data Protection Act itself. That's what we'll be discussing today here. And there are also some other acts that, one of them that is important for healthcare, it's the Medical Treatment Agreements Act. It's when uh, applicable in, case, uh, in cases where a medical professional um, is, uh, is treating a patient. Well, in the Netherlands, the authority that oversees the data processing in the Netherlands, it's uh, the Data Protection Authority. Every member state has one. In the Netherlands, it is uh, het College Bescherming Persoonsgegevens. That's Dutch again. Um, what do they do? They, uh, they, they overview processing and they do a lot of investigations to see if companies and institutions comply with privacy regulations in the Netherlands. They also handle the notifications of data processing. Sometimes you have an obligation to uh, inform the data protection authority about you being involved in processing personal data. And sometimes also you, um, well, you don't have to notify uh, the authority if the processing is subject to the exemption decree. But you really have to uh, look that up. There's a long list of data processing which you don't have to notify at the authority. And uh, last but not least, the authority is also involved in enforcement. And if you do not comply with the privacy regulations, uh, they might give you a fine up to 4,500 euros, which is not very high. I think a lot of companies are willing to pay that. But that will soon change as there's new legislation in the Netherlands coming up about data breaches, about a notification obligation uh, when there is a data breach. And I will get back to that later. But the fines in that case, if you don't have security in place, and um, well, a medical data is really out there because of some hacker got, re got their hands on it, you have to notify if you do not comply with that notification obligation, the fines go up to 810,000 euros. What was this? <laughs> uh, this actually, um, he may not look like this, but this is a hacker. This is somebody who um, basically got access to patients' files, basically to show Netherlands uh, that it's very easy to get access to those files. But he doesn't really look like a hacker. He's, he's a polit politician. Um, what I wanted to uh, also point out with this slide is that next to administrative fines, there are also fines for criminals, uh, cyber criminals who involved in, uh, in hacking. And the fines, they go up to, well, this one was 750 euros, but they go up much higher. But something on the side. OK, what is personal data according to the Dutch Data Protection Act? At personal data, you see the definition there. Um, it's, it's data related to identified or identifiable persons. Uh, so actually, it could be about you and me, um, if you can identify a person. Interesting uh, is that the European Commission released, uh, or the, actually the Article 29 Working Party, they released a document about health data and also about uh, identification 
of people. Uh, and as pointed out in previous presentations, uh, anonymization and pseudonymization, um, well, th th there are techniques that are used to um, actually escape the scope of the uh, Data Protection Regulation and Data Protection Act. But in healthcare, a lot of uh, data is actually personal data, and health data is even a specific ca category of uh, personal data. Uh, but if you want to process health data, you need explicit consent. Well, you also see the definition of processing. Um, you are very easily involved in processing personal data, as you can see. Now, what parties are involved in, uh, um, in data processing? First of all, there's the data controller. The data controller is um, uh, the, the person or entity uh, that is um, uh, responsible for compliance with the Data Protection Act. And what does this controller do? Uh, you can identify this controller by just checking who actually determines the purposes and means of the processing. So uh, let's say a hospital wants to collect data and um, they, they prescribe uh, explicitly like, okay, I want that data from patients to be included. Um, and um, well, and, and this is the way we're going to handle the data. So that is, that is how you would describe a data controller. Then there's also a lot of data processors. That's actually um, other parties handling the data, for instance, software companies. Uh, but they do that uh, for the hospital, for instance. And they also have obligations under the Data Protection Act. And then, of course, there's the data subject, which is actually you and me or the, the, the person from uh, whom the data is collected. And then there's quite often third parties involved in processing too. I will leave that out considering the time. Well, health data. In the Netherlands, and it's pretty much the same in, in all European countries, I'd say, it is um, are prohibited to process health data. Um, there are a few exemptions. And one of the uh, one of the most relevant one is the option of consent. You are allowed to process health data um, from patients or people. Uh, in case you're probably working on a wellness app or something like that, you're not talking about patients. Um, if a freely specific and informed consent has been given, and um, well, for health data, an explicit consent is required, as I pointed out before. Um, well, what does this mean? Uh, it means that it has to be explicit, and I say just make sure you record the consent in writing, also for reasons of evidence. Then there's a few exceptions in, uh, in the Data Protection Act 2, and one of them is uh, pointed out there. It's, um, it's in Article 21. It uh, indicates that data is processed in a treatment relationship, so by a medical professional and the patient concerning the treatment. But quite often, if you work in healthcare or create an app, um, it's not only applicable in that situation. So this is, well, it is an exemption, but well, in healthcare, it's, uh, it's only applicable to very limited situations. Then there are some rules on the retention of health data. According to the Data Protection Act, you are not allowed to uh, store the data any longer than necessary, than strictly necessary. Um, then there's another act in the Netherlands, which is the Medical Treatment and Agreements Act, that actually says that health data has to be uh, stored for at least 15 years. This is a derogation uh, related to the, well, compared to the, the general rule of Article 10 of the Data Protection Act. And in case of a treatment relation, you have to comply with the 15 years retention period. Well, then we come to a topic that, that um, raises quite some questions in practice. Like, you can have a private pol privacy policy in place, you can comply with the consent requirements, but then what? Then there's a lot of paperwork done, but how to keep the data safe, and is it actually safe? In the Netherlands, there are quite some cases, and I don't know how things are, um, are going here in, in France, for instance, um, where there are quite some data breaches, and well, the report of the Dutch DPA, the Data Protection Authority, uh, was quite clear on this, that the protection of health data in the Netherlands is, well, generally not up to standards. Uh, 
Oh, before I forget that, for health data, uh, for the processing of health data in the Netherlands, there is a specific standard, the NEN uh, 7510, which is used as a guideline for, um, well, for protection of data. And one thing that's included, for instance, is a two-step authentication. That's mandatory. Uh, the Data Protection Authority will actually look if you comply with that standard. Well, this is something else. This was not a two-step authentication. Um, some people try to secure data with uh, biometric passwords. It's maybe not such a good idea to use fingerprints, as you cannot change these kind of passwords once they are out there. Just, just an example. I will now briefly discuss two reports of the Dutch, Dutch Data Protection Authority. Um, one of them was, uh, there was an app involved. It was actually a sort of wellness app for kids. You can see two pictures of it there. It was um, created to encourage uh, little children to brush their teeth uh, pro properly. And children could take a picture after they brush their teeth and actually only have uh, their teeth exposed in a picture. And then, um, well, basically, um, put it on an animal. <laughs> you can see the smiling frog. It looks really funny and it was meant to be encouraging. However, they forgot to implement uh, correct security measures, which meant that for some children, their entire face was visible on, on the internet because you could upload the pictures uh, to internet. And um, uh, what else was wrong um, is that they didn't obtain the consent from children because if you want to process data from children, from minors, you also need the consent of the parents. And uh, well, the app developers didn't think of that. Uh, it has now been corrected, so it's fine. But it, it shows that the Data Protection Authority is looking into what are you actually doing and are you compliant or not. There is also a recommendation to always use uh, SSL if you uh, transmit data over the internet. Then there was another report which, in which a hospital was involved. And the network security in that hospital was really not up to standards. Uh, a common problem in, in uh, hospitals, in the Netherlands at least, is that they only have like limited resources to implement security measures. Um, what we see a lot in practice is that they work with old systems and they, they do their best to protect everything, but then new software comes in and it, it's all going to get connected. Um, and well, then they do have to take measures to actually secure the data. Uh, what kind of measures could they take? This is from the report from the DPA. Well, in case they do use end-of-life software, which cannot be updated anymore, then you should implement other measures, such as um, separation of the networks. Well, this may be not so relevant for you in practice if you are a company, but this is the thing that hospitals are struggling with, network security. And it's good to keep that in mind and to see if you can maybe even help the hospitals tackle this problem. Well, what if you want to transfer uh, your data outside the EU? What, what are the things you have to keep in mind then? Well, first of all, there, um, well, some people worry about surveillance practices. This is something you could tackle in your pri privacy policy by just explaining very well what you are gonna do with the data and how the data is protected. But uh, you need explicit, again, consent to send the data uh, outside the EU. Um, or you can um, get a permit from the minister, which is regulated in Article 77 of the Dutch Data Protection Act. Um, and the transfer, um, you can transfer to a country that guarantees an adequate level of protection of the data. Um, a lot of people think that if they send the data to, uh, to a US company that has safe harbor certification, that that's covered then. Well, that's not really the case. Uh, safe Harbor certification only covers the transfer of the data itself. It does not mean that the company is actually compliant with data protection law. So you also have to think about that. And uh, well, you can uh, use uh, standard contractual clauses there or uh, any kind of uh, data processing agreement uh, to make sure that also the company you're transferring to is actually compliant with uh, um, uh, privacy regulations. Um, so yeah, you really have to think about that in practice. And then it's covered. Well, what's going on at this moment? So this is not the Netherlands, this is EU. 
Uh, there's a new privacy regulation coming up. You might have heard about that. Um, and well, this is generally um, my and also my firm's opinion about this uh, regulation. Um, what's wrong with the current framework? The current framework is very fragmented, as I just tried to briefly scratch the surface of the privacy regulations in the Netherlands. Every EU member state has its own system, which is, well, it it's raises quite a lot of questions um, in uh, how to comply with all these different regimes. Uh, furthermore, it's sort of outdated. And, well, as it raises a lot of questions, um, it's, it's unclear. So compliance is difficult to comply with all the privacy regulations in all the different member states. And it's, it's quite a costly thing too. So there's a, a solution to that. Just throw in a regulation that will be directly um, applicable in all member states of the EU. So that's the good news. I think at least the fragmentation problem will be solved with that. However, the impact of the general data protection regulation on healthcare is, um, well, not such a good news. Uh, especially if you think about big data. Um, uh, for instance, uh, there is a principle of purpose limit limitation and there is a problem with the explicit consent you need for processing medical data. Why is that a problem? Uh, every time you are changing the purpose of processing, you would need to gain or get uh, explicit consent from the patient again and over and over again. Furthermore, there is uh, a right to withdraw consent at any time which means, or could mean, that uh, patients can withdraw the consent to processing data at any time, which could lead to invalidation of clinical research, for instance. That is just a few problems we see. So that's not good news. That's what I think, and that's what a lot of people think that are involved in healthcare. And I would really like to encourage you to read these three documents about what's going on. Um, with a, a general data protection regulation and actually form your own opinion on it and raise your voice in case you think it's bad news. Maybe you would look like that once you've read that. Okay, well, this is one of the latest developments in the Netherlands. Um, I saw, yeah, I've, already, I've, I've already discussed this with you. Um, it's the proposal uh, of the notification of data breaches uh, it's currently in the Senate, which um, means that it will probably enter into force within a few months from now. And, um, well, uh, security is one thing that is already regulated under the Data Protection uh, Act in currently. However, this, this really is a push for companies and entities to make sure that the data is actually kept safe. I'm not sure if this is a good push, meaning that the fines are really high. And especially for startups, I'm a bit worried. But let's see how this turns out in practice. So I've just told you briefly a little bit about the framework of data protection in the Netherlands, which, well, I think it's, um, it's pretty much the same as in France, as in a lot of other European countries. Other than that, there's a few little things different. And for instance, this notification obligation that's coming up now. But that's all about data protection, that's good. But have you also thought about this? That if you are involved in developing an app, it could as well be a medical device. Have you already encountered these things? Yes? I'm not sure if it will be discussed during this, uh, this hackathon, but I think it's a good thing to keep in mind, because even wellness apps uh, that look like wellness apps could be covered by the medical devices directive, which means you also need to comply with the medical devices uh, legislation, uh, which means the e-marking, which means a lot of testing, and um, it costs more money too. Uh, the words that are there here, as they come from the uh, MHRA guidance, this, this is not mentioned there, because that only mentions the MEDEF documents that are very helpful to check uh, whether your software is a medical device or not. Um, and, but this is the guidance from MHRA, it's uh, the UK, and it's also very helpful in practice. So if you um, got, get lost in the MEDAF, please also look at this document, it's really helpful. And then there's other stuff you need to think about, such as IP, uh, advertising rules that are really different in all member states, 
liability, you might want to know more about that. Um, commercial contracts you need to have in place and contracts related to data processing and reimbursement is also something that is, could be important to you. Well, I'm just raising some questions here. <laughs> okay, uh, this is it for now. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask them. <laughs> Are there any questions? No questions? Okay, well, I'll be here for the next uh, few days. I'm here until Sunday evening, so if you have any questions or would like to know more about data protection in practice, there's a question. <laughs> Do you have some examples for privacy by design? Privacy by design examples. Yes, uh, you could actually have a look at the Article 29 Working Party documents uh, about privacy by design, which has some very practical guidance on how to implement privacy in apps, like with pu uh, push-up buttons uh, and how to implement it.